Welcome everyone to the newly named All In on Real Estate Meetup. I'm your host, Aaron Goins. Uh, when I was in the military, no one talked about real estate in my circle. And I want to change that. You know, a lot of times people deploy, you see a lot more dog charge and pickup trucks on the road and then appreciating value items. Um, people using their VA loan and things like that. So I want to start a meetup to help people out, educate them so they can build generational wealth for themselves and their families. Also, um, I have my own uh, clubhouse room on Wednesdays at 530 called the Military Real Estate Investment Investing Hour. So please join me on Clubhouse. And also, uh, we just started a new homeless vets uh, call, bi-weekly call. So if anybody's interested in helping homeless vets, please uh, email me or, uh, or get, get a hold of my information and I'll push you an email chain. And uh, the next call will be April 1st at 4 p.m. Eastern time. So please, uh, if you wanna help, that, help a cause like the homeless vets, please let me know. So I'm very, very excited for everybody um, on here. Um, and uh, if anybody is new, please introduce yourself. So Kojo, can you introduce yourself to everybody, please, sir? I should unmute. Hey, good evening, everybody. I'm Kojo Usu, uh, originally from uh, Ghana, West Africa. And actually, I just came back like a couple of weeks ago. Also, uh, 13 years, I'm a military vet. Uh, used to be a brag, been all over the place, and now uh, came to here for Lewis and I got out. So now I'm doing full-time real estate. And that's how I ended up knowing uh, Aaron. So cool. that's just me. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Amber, can you introduce yourself to everybody, please? Sure, my name is Amber Walker. Uh, I'm originally from Chattanooga, Tennessee. I've been in, 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 in Atlanta for 20 years now. Um, I'm an insurance broker by day and just wanting to learn more about investment real estate uh, for a possible passive income source. Thank you, Amber, and you had the right place. You are definitely in the right place. <laughs> um, we definitely have many, many um, either experienced or, or seasoned investors who can definitely help you out in that cause. All right, great, thanks. And last, but certainly not least, Mr. Ricky, can you introduce yourself to everybody, please? Hey, good afternoon. My name is Ricky Moore, originally from Louisiana. Um, probably still sounding like I'm still underwater, haven't figured out the, the Bluetooth yet. I'm just here to um, listen in and learn. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Ricky. Now, you don't sound like underwater now, so you're a little bit better now. So, um, but welcome. That's just a new members on here. Uh, thank you so much, for guys, for coming. I'm um, very, very excited for our guest speaker, Mr. David Pearson. Um, and uh, please, please uh, get your pens together and, and listen. Uh, David has a great, great story. Uh, we talked on the phone a couple months ago and I love this story and I introduced and I asked him to come and be a, a guest speaker for this uh, meetup. So David, uh, please introduce yourself to everybody. Take it away, sir. Great, thanks, Aaron. And I'll, and I'll kind of start out that, um, you know, the reason, kind of the primary reason why I'm um, here today to, to kind of talk about this story is to, I guess, uh, one, to inspire um, and really to kind of pay it forward um, because I've had folks um, in my past have kind of given me um, some tips, at least share their experiences that I'm hoping to share with you today. Um, so appreciate Aaron, uh, the opportunity to speak here today and, um, you know, um, you know, hopefully maybe there's an opportunity to connect here in the future. So. So I can, um, I think at this point, Aaron, you want me to go ahead and just start the, the presentation. I can just start sharing. I do have a deck for you guys. Yeah, yeah, you can share. Yeah, it's, it's, oh. it's you able to share. All right, let me. <clears throat> it's like the first time I've really done anything like this too. So can you guys see my screen? Yes. All right, so I'll you know kind of start here. I've got a little bit of an intro. I figured I would save it um, for because it's in the deck. But you know, today I'm just going to kind of share my accidental landlord journey because it truly was an accident. Um, it hasn't really been intentional until like the last few years. So, 
I guess I'll kind of start out first with, um, we'll kind of start here and you don't have to have the answer to it now, but just be thinking about it. Um, I had somebody um, in my past kind of ask me what my why was. And, um, you know, as I kind of talked through the story, that why changed for me. Um, and why you're here is going to be different. Um, and your why in the future is going to be different. Um, but it's a really good question to, to ask yourself um, uh, around your intent and really what's your why. Why do you want to get in real estate? Really, why do you want to do, you know, anything that you're, you're dedicating your time to? So we'll start with that. Um, just a little bit about me. Um, <clears throat> I'm married um, and have an adult son. Uh, son actually lives here in Atlanta. And uh, I'm originally from Montana, but traveled all over the world, like, you know, many of Aaron of your veterans who have been kind of on some of your previous calls. Um, but I was in communications and, you know, it's kind of like, you know, the, the military is kind of like seized a reason or a lifetime. Right. And so I decided after eight years that my time was up and um, I moved to Portland, Oregon, and I bought my first house. Um, and. Uh, you know, I, I had bought it actually on a VA loan. Uh, I never bought it, better bought a house before. My mom um, had just bought her first house a few years before that. We had always, you know, my mom had always rented and we had always kind of lived in rental properties and things like that. And so it was kind of a big deal about that house. But um, a few months later, I the company that I was working for um, asked me to move to Houston, Texas, and, you know, I had this house and I put no money down, as many of you have probably heard. I think there was a gentleman kind of talking about the VA loan program, I put no money down. <clears throat> and, you know, I call my realtor because I bought that house like February. I call my realtor like in April and her name was Ke Carrie. I said, hey, Carrie, I need to sell this house. And she said, well, you're going to have to come up with like $10,000. Uh, and I'm like, why is that? She's like, because you have no equity in the house. <laughs> and I'm like, how is that? And she says, yeah. I said, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. I was like in my, you know, 20s. And she said, why don't you just rent it? And she put me on, you know, connected me to some folks and, and that kind of stuff. So that's when I bought my first house. And um, it became, a, that became my first, my first rental. Um, so I moved to Houston. Life, life went on. I um, actually lost my job in Houston um, and moved to Atlanta in 02, and I've been here ever since and held a, held a variety of corporate roles here in Atlanta. Um, so kind of transitioned from communications, did project management, program management, you know, worked on a lot of really um, neat, uh, neat things here in town. And, you know, but I've always had kind of a passion for real estate, which I'll kind of get into here in a little bit. Um, so I know, Aaron, I think you said you'll, you have folks who kind of ask questions at the end, but, but, you know, if you also allow it, I mean, you know, anyone who has any questions, we go along are certainly open to it. Um, so I did talk a little bit about kind of my first experience when we started getting into the why. Uh, I had, did not have the 10 grand to close on this house. So my why was, or my goal was, I'll just run this house until I figure out what I'm going to do. You know, it's kind of like that fake until you make it. You just kind of do what you need to until you figure it out. Paying four hundred dollars over my mortgage, wasn't making a lot of money anyway. But it was a lot more money than I made in the Air Force, so you know it wasn't really a, kind of a big deal to me in the grand scheme of things. Um, but that was my why in one Just rent this house until I figure out what to do. Um, <clears throat> fast forward into two thousand and five, that same real estate agent calls me and says, "Hey, have you thought about selling your house?" I'm like, "No, not really." Um, she's like, well, it's worth a hundred thousand dollars more than you bought it for. I'm like, heck yeah, I want to sell it. Uh, I'm going to go do the thing that Aaron's been advocating folks not to do, go buy a new car or something like that. Something ridiculous. Um, but, uh, I got to, I actually met, I guess I kind of got connected with my first mentor and somebody that I worked with at CDC and, you know, he says, you know how much taxes you're going to pay, you know, on that house? I'm like, no. He's like, you should look into it because you're probably going to end up paying half of those taxes, half of that profit in taxes. So he connected me with some folks and I found out about something called a 1031 ex exchange. And at the time I was doing my own taxes. So I ran the math and he was right. Dang it. Um, 
So instead of, you know, instead of buying the BMW or the ridiculous sports car or whatever that I really couldn't even afford if I didn't have this money, um, I bought two rentals. And this was in 2005, you know, um, right before the housing crash. I bought two, two rentals here in, in the Atlanta area, <clears throat> 05. So fast forward a year later. Uh, so nationwide housing crisis, and this is when things really start popping. I don't know, some of you may not be old enough. Some of you probably are. I suspect, David, you are. Um, but, you know, things got really bad for anyone that was in real estate in 08. Um, so my why changed. Just like, man, I thought I was going to make a ton of money at this thing. I thought real estate was supposed to be really easy. I thought I was just supposed to buy these houses and, you know, I was just going to get really rich because that's really all I thought about it at that point. Um, but you know, so my goal at that point was, well, let's just hang on to these things and let's just avoid foreclosure, just avoid a disaster. And that's when I really started to figure out that this was more than just about money. This was, you know, or kind of an occupation, you know, just a side hobby <clears throat> because I was actually renting those houses to real families that lost their homes. Um, you know, a couple of folks that had lost their homes to bankruptcies, hadn't been, had been displaced, um, you know, just uh, teetering on the edge of unemployment. Um, and they needed a, you know, they needed a safe and affordable place for their family to live. And, you know, I provided that need and I only had a few rentals, but I provided it because these, these were real families. Um, so I rented, rented, you know, just keep renting it and just avoided the foreclosure, you know, just uh, kept them rented and um, provided those houses to people that needed them. Um, even though I was completely way underwater on them, you know, they were worth way less than what I originally bought it for. And I didn't really know why I was even doing it anymore. Um, I think half the time I even kind of thought, well, maybe I just wish that they would foreclose. So I won't have to worry about it anymore because when those repairs come in, you know, they get expensive. And if it's not paying you anything, you're like, why are you even doing it? Um, so that was 06. <clears throat> And then just kind of going through, um, accelerating through the years, um, you know, I was dealing with a lot of things in my personal life after all of that. And, you know, I think, you know, one day I just kind of woke up and I don't know about, you know, you guys, but, you know, I've done like, you know, started really hitting YouTube with some stuff and started getting, you know, marketing for like bigger pockets and you know it's like following this guy DeRosa group and there's some other guy I was following just a bunch of these guys you know it's like I had time to burn I was watching these YouTube videos I started reading some stuff and and you know I just kind of it just kind of the light bulb went off it's like you know this is a business and I haven't really been running it like a business and you know when I really looked at it it's like man my houses are way under rent and um you know, again, still hadn't been making any money at this point, but uh, realized I needed to do something about that. And so then when I started looking at that, I was like, man, these houses also need a lot of repairs. Um, so I started, you know, started repairing them and, uh, you know, started researching what it was going to take to to get some of these repairs in and, you know, and so really started trying to make it a business, trying to, you know, figure out how to, how to piece all this together now that it seemed that the housing market was thawing a little bit. Um, and I was trying to, you know, and I was getting my personal life in order, my professional life really focused. And uh, so <clears throat> in 2017, I bought my first rental that I've ever bought in 11 years. It's been so long. Um, and then I just decided as I got to go all in, it's like um, single family thing ain't working. Um, maybe I should be looking at multifamily. Uh, I was listening to some of that stuff on Bigger Pockets. I actually found somebody um, that um, was a guest on Bigger Pockets who started mentoring me. So I called him and I started getting some advice from him. And that's the other, you know, that's the other thing that I'll kind of allude to later um, is really around kind of the lessons. But started talking with some folks who who've done this um, and just tried to, you know, just tried to do well at it. So got my real estate license in 2017. Uh, sold off one of my uh, problematic rental properties in 18, about a couple duplexes, um, and things just really started to, um, you know, really accelerate from there. I bought a trailer park a couple years ago, 
And then during COVID last year, I actually had somebody reach out to me and I bought another duplex last year. And so um, that's, that's kind of the, you know, kind of the timeline of events. And I'll go into some things here that, you know, I really learned along the way. Um, and, and it's, you know, the business has significantly changed once, once I actually focused on it um, and you focus on it um, and pay attention to the numbers like they tell you. Um, you know, you really can do well with, with real estate. Um, so, um, but j just like, you know, the money thing I was telling you and what I kind of figured out in 06 that, you know, there's real folks that need a <clears throat> clean, safe and affordable place to live. And particularly with these properties I bought over the last few years, they have not been in great shape. They've been class C properties, maybe even border class Ds. And, um, you know, I've done a significant amount of renovation to them. They're in growing parts of, of uh, Georgia uh, where there's a lot of blue collar jobs and just there's just a lack of housing. And, and, you know, I don't know how many of you are landlords, but, you know, when you, and, I, you know, when you actually have interaction with the folks that you know, live in these properties that you're providing. I mean, they have real stories and they're real people and they had, they need a place to live just like everybody. And that's when it really became clear to me that, you know, instead of, you know, trying to make this run, you know, instead of trying to make a whole lot of money at this, and that'd be really the only mission is if you can figure out a way to take care of others, you know, you, it will come back to you. Um, and so, you know, I, you know, I think it was just, a, you know, it was not even like, but a couple of years ago, it just kind of dawned on me that, you know, what I really want to do is provide safe, clean and affordable housing for people in need. And, you know, when you, when you provide that, you know, people really, they really appreciate it. And you have, you have, uh, you know, I've really built this relationship with my tenants and um, it's been one of the most rewarding things that I've done over the last few years. Um, so, and then, you know, in the meantime, I've been able to build, you know, this, you know, pretty fairly significant real estate um, portfolio that, you know, I hope to grow and, um, and um, also figure out ways to build it differently, kind of to Aaron's point to figure out, you know, other folks to kind of build it with. Um, you know, there's a gentleman that I connected with here in Atlanta who um, has um, connections with the community improvement districts and has been involved with community leaders on topics like eviction. And, you know, he's, he's, par he's partnered with folks and the advice that he's given me is, he says, try, he says, as you, as you continue to get successful at real estate, figure out different, figure out new people to partner with and different ways to exercise in real estate. And you shouldn't do it by yourself. Find other people to partner with, um, pull together your resources, network, and align on your mission. So I just say that, because it just kind of ties up with my own personal why, but you all have kind of your own approach as well. But that, for me, that really stuck and it, it really made it where I had a mission statement that not only I could execute against, but also I could execute with my tenants. When I talk to my tenants, and, you know, when I'm screening a tenant or talking to them, I'm like, you know, well, this is the community that I'm offering here is, is to provide safe, clean and affordable housing. And so if you don't meet any of those criteria, then you just, you know, you're not going to be able to stay here. But if you're all about that, then there's a community here that's ready for you. Um, so that's, that's been our mission statement. <clears throat> so what I learned along the way, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so build relationships. Um, you know, when you have, you know, these rental properties are always going to need repair, you're going to need real estate agents, you need people that are going to help you market it. You know, you need people to help you find places, you need HVAC guys, you need people that you can call in the middle of the night when the roof's leaking and the plumbing is broke. Um, you need insurance come. I mean, there's all kinds of folks, as you all know. I mean, Aaron brings a lot of those different folks on these, on, on this channel, um, but build those relationships um, and try to help those folks, you know, even if, even if um, you don't need anything from them, try to help them in some way. And, you know, cause they, those relationships, as you build those, you'll find that you can call on them to really help you when you're in a pinch. 
uh, network with people with similar real estate agent, real estate interests. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but <clears throat> you know, I talk to folks at work and you know, there's plenty of people that I work with and I work in corporate America, plenty of folks that say, man, I don't know how you would um, own, you know, rental property. I mean, I just would not want to deal with a tenant um, and they just don't get the concept or, you know, I'll kind of get folks like, man, I'd love to make a ton of money at being a real, real, you know, owning a bunch of real estate, but they're folks that never really exercise on it. So, you know, having, you know, network folks who have, you know, the similar interests as you or, you know, or, or in a position that you'd want to trade, um, shoes with, right. Um, cause you're going to get some really good insights from that. Um, social media is great. You hear all these folks kind of talk about all this stuff, but, um, you know, like, as I found, I joined one of my local Atlanta REIAs. Um, it's a great group. Um, but you know, there's a lot of selling there, but you know, if you really kind of look, you, and you choose, you really get a good network and start building some friendships, um, find a mentor. Um, like I said, I found a gentleman that, um, he was on the web. He actually had some property in Minnesota and, you know, he was, he gave me some very candid advice a lot early, very early on. That's really helped tremendously. Um, and, you know, maybe your mentor will change, you know, that early mentor that I had in 05 convinced me not to buy that BMW and invest in a couple of rentals. He completely got out of rentals. So he's not even like somebody that I would, you know, I still talk to him, but, um, you know, he, he was definitely, you know, had, had a lot more experience than I did at the time. And so he was really, um, really helpful to me. And I've, you know, been able to help him as well. Uh, get a good set of tools and resources to help you along the way. Um, you know, there's calculators out there. Um, you know, if you use, you know, software, you know, Excel spreadsheet, you know, whatever, you know, contacts, um, you know, whatever resources you need, there's, there's a whole tools. You know, I work on a lot of my rental properties, so I buy tools, um, you know, just get the right resources that you need uh, for whatever it is you're trying to do. And then, you know, the last thing, at least on this slide is, you know, go get your license. I mean, if you're serious about this, man, you can go out there and there's all kinds of data out there. And I know those real estate agents out there want to earn your business, but if you get your license, you just get closer to it. You start interacting with other real estate agents. You start to understand things you don't understand. It's just kind of as a principal or a client or a customer. And you become, you become your own real estate agent and a principal. You really kind of change the game. I mean, you don't know how many times I've called a realtor on a listing and I never told her, you know, who I was calling, you know, who I was representing. I just called her on a property and, you know, those, they'll just disclose stuff to you. Um, thinking that you're just the agent, right? You know, you start asking some questions and then based on that, just go throw in an offer. So there's, there's some, there's some advantages there, right? Um, and, you know, besides the monetary advantages, you know, the commissions and stuff, those are yours. Um, you don't charge your, I don't know how it is where you're at, but here in Georgia, you know, there's like a listing side and, and a buying side and, you know, as much as you can kind of handle that for your own properties, that's all, that's all yours. So, you know, that's, that's one thing that I, I've learned. Um, it's been very helpful. <clears throat> um, learn the business. Uh, so I've done a lot of renovation. Um, I, would, I would say that, you know, there's definitely years there where I've just really more or less just poured all of the potential profit or cash flow that I'd have from these properties right back into the properties. Um, but as a result of that, you know, for example, on that trailer park, I was able to increase the rents by 35%, which now covers the original mortgage that I even had on the property in the first place. This is with a lot of sweat equ equity. And, you know, my wife would tell you, I mean, she didn't even really see me that much over the last few years. It was every weekend, you know, 40 miles from here, you know, with, um, with my tools, you know, working on these, working on mobile homes or, or houses or, you know, whatever. And, and I know that's not for everybody. Um, but, but for me, um, it's, uh, something I really became passionate about and, um, really enjoyed learning about, you know, YouTube is just phenomenal with all the different resources that you have access to, um, to learn how to do just about anything. I mean, if you want to be a software engineer, you want to learn Python, you can get out there and learn Python. You want to learn how to be a project manager, you, you know, learn how to do that. And, 
you want to learn how to fix your plumbing or replumb a house, you can figure out that too. And, you know, in fact, I just did that in November with the help of some other folks. It's just, you know, I mean, I could have paid somebody $8,000 to do it, but I did it for a thousand dollars. Um, and you know, those kinds of things are going to help you a lot, um, early on. Um, um, <clears throat> The experience of having good tenants and bad tenants, they're all good experiences. They're all, you know, you'll learn something from that. You'll learn something from those bad tenants. You'll learn something from those good tenants. You really, I don't even know if it's even fair to characterize them as good or, good or bad. I mean, there's, there's shades of gray. Um, you know, some tenants are, you know, notoriously always late and you have to deal with that. There's other tenants maybe take really good care of your property. But just having that experience, you know, starting early, um, you know, I know that, you know, you know, I have property management that helps me with this now, but you have that exposure, you learn how to really interact and um, figure out what the true issues are um, that will really, you'll benefit from a lot as you scale. When you do have that experience uh, fixing things or at least have a perspective of it, you'll be able to um, negotiate better with those contractors. Um, and if you deal with the same contractor um, over a period of time and they, you know, give you, you do a lot of business with them, then when you call them, um, you know, they're going to be more likely to, um, to help you fix your issue. I'll give you an example. I mean, you call up any, any Joe plumber and you, you know, you call them out in the middle of the night, you're going to pay a lot of money. I mean, I don't know, you know, what rates are where you're at, but five, $600 maybe. Um, but if you've used that plumber over the last 10 years to help you with a number of things, and you've also referred that plumber to a number of folks and they know that, um, then maybe, you know, you get them out there at 2 a.m. to fix something and it's a couple hundred dollars or they give you the advice so you even avoid it. So that kind of goes back to that relationship thing. I mean, you know, just trying to help one another. All, we're all trying to get to different places um, and that experience helps. Um, and then starting early. You know, I like I said, this it feels like this has been for me just an entirely accidental journey up until about five years ago when I got really deliberate with it. I wasn't even deliberate. I just kind of thought in my 20s and 30s that, you know, I just buy this re this rental real estate and then one day I'd be rich. Um, and then I figured out, well, that's not really <clears throat> what it's about anyway. Um, but starting early has helped, you know, has helped me. Um, it can help you if you're still contemplating and getting in, you got to get in. Um, you're going to make mistakes. You got to make those mistakes. And, you know, hopefully you avoid what I did and you have a network of folks that you can call on that can um, help you or give you some perspective. And, you know, um, that so starting early can help. Um, it's kind of like that as you like, you hear like when's the best time to plant a tree like 20 years ago. It's like the best time is today. So it's never too late to start. Um, but starting early definitely helps. Uh, so, <clears throat> so, you know, where I'm at today, I've got 17 rentals and in, in rental properties in total. And, you know, I don't, you know, this market now, I mean, the Atlanta market, I'm sure it's like that in um, Washington and really all over the country. There are, as of today, there are 6,200 single family homes for sale in the MLS. I mean, I just, I have not seen it. Uh, I mean, I remember back in 08, there was like over 50,000 houses for sale. They actually had a billboard on the side of the interstate that said how many houses for sale. It's just chronic, chronic shortage of housing. And so, you know, who knows what's next with that? Um, we, you know, I have some ideas, um, but buying is, 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 is um, a little tough. Um, there, there's definitely some opportunities out there. I know we were talking, I think, in the beginning of the call about opportunities to build and you know that's that seems to be kind of an, an area that would be interesting is there's just seems to be a shortage of builders um the other interesting thing and i don't know if you all have seen this dynamic but i've noticed um over the last year or so with some listings i've had there's a lot of investment groups that are coming in like making all cash offers so i think there are definitely a lot of more corporations that are investing in residential real estate so it'll be interesting to see how all this plays out, you know, when you really kind of, <clears throat> kind of get back to the fact that everybody still needs a place to live, right? Um, and, you know, making housing affordable 
is should be a very high priority for you know any administration. And you know, I don't I don't know what we're going to do about that, and I'll kind of leave politics aside of it. But it's it's something. So there's there's an opportunity here with some something with this, but it's in you know particularly here in Atlanta, it's just been really challenging. Uh, so so yeah, po uh, positive cash flow rentals are doing great. Um, you know, I'll probably I'll, I'll probably try to buy some more, um, or maybe see kind of what happens. Um, you know, I'm looking at some some potential things right now where you know maybe i start you know like a property management business um or you know get my brokerage license i've been a realtor long enough here in atlanta you know and it's different in other places but you have to be a realtor for three years so you know do that or you know find out a way to to find some new deals maybe even outside of atlanta so i, I don't know what's next i mean like you know you know, some of you, you know, have a plan and are kind of executing that me, I'm trying to figure it out what it is, because, um, you know, when when a duplex here in Georgia was, you know, $130,000 five years ago, they're now $230,000. Um, I mean, it's just gotten, it's gotten really inflated. And, you know, I just had a listing here a month ago in Fayetteville, down near uh, where Ty Tyler Perry Studios is. Um, I had 30 showings in two days. I had 20 offers. We went $25,000 over asking. I mean, it was just, and it just happened in two days. I mean, it's just utterly, and multiple investors. Um, it was just, uh, you know, it's just, it's just really an odd market here in Atlanta, uh, for sure. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of it. Um, I never thought I'd own a trailer park. I lived in several trailer parks growing up in Montana. I got evicted out of trailer parks uh, when I was growing up. Never thought I'd own one. Um, uh, but buying trailer parks, you can't even find trailer parks right now. Um, but yeah, just never thought I'd buy a trailer park out of a trailer park. Never thought I'd own duplexes, own those duplexes. Um, gosh, who knows what's next? Maybe it's you know going in with somebody to buy an apartment complex or something. Who knows? Um, I'm open. I'm hoping to be inspired today. <laughs> What's next? So, um, you know, that's that's really, you know, all that I had. And, you know, I kind of come back to that question, you know, what is your why? So why are you going down this journey? And, you know, why are you on this call today? And, you know, what kind of answers are you seeking? And um, what's going to really motivate you uh, to go after it? So, you know, as you see by my story, my why has changed. And, you know, I um, <clears throat> will end up doing real estate full time here at some point. Um, I still enjoy my corporate job and I enjoy real estate too. I'm kind of married to both, but eventually I'm going to be doing this all real estate. And I just, you know, stay tuned. I don't know what it is. Uh, I just jumped into a new sales role because I just love as a investor and an agent, I love interacting with customers and, and clients and stuff like that. And so, you know, who knows, we'll see what happens. So that's, that's all I had. And, you know, like I said, this is really just me paying it forward because of some folks that have kind of helped me and just kind of stumbled along the way and uh, learned some things. And, uh, you know, feel free to reach out to me. If, if any of you have any questions, I'd be more than happy uh, to, to help in any way that I can. Um, so. Well, I've, I've got a quick question. Yeah, uh, of course. Don't mind. And that, and that is, um, you're working primarily in the Atlanta area, right? And yeah. You, you talked about how prices have gone up. How have rents gone up? In other words, what, what's your gross monthly rental on on your duplexes as compared to the value or the the price of them i mean <clears throat> i mean i'll just use kind of one one area so i bought like one of these duplexes for like one hundred ten thousand dollars like five years ago mm -hmm. it's now worth 200 grand and when i bought them they were absolute dumps they had <laughs> ivy grown all up around them and there is, you know, they weren't updated since the 1960s. I renovated all of them and I raised the rent um, 80%. So, um, you know, I was never able to do that with single families, but 
the duplexes and particularly the trailer park. Um, the trailer park I have has actually has a couple single family homes on it. It has six trailers mm -hmm. and those trailers, man, I tell you what, I've been, that whole property is able to get those rents up 35%. Um, yeah. So, so what's your, what's a typical cap rate? I haven't even calculated cap rate on it. Um, to be honest with you. Okay. I just haven't. Um, I think when the cap rate on it, when I bought it was 10%. Now, I mean, I, like I said, I've, I've, I've poured a ton of money in it. Um, but, you know, I kind of look at it at this point, like it's an annuity. Like it's, I mean, the, the, the increases in rent that I have is by far paying the mortgage on it. So everything else is just cash flow. Okay. But I figured out ways, I figured out ways to spend it, you know, like put in a new road, you know, build a shop there on the on the property you know there's there's always there's always something <laughs> so um but i've i've candidly ran out of stuff to fix so you know i've been really going hard at it for the last couple of years um really three years and i ran out of stuff like i virtually fix. i have like one, i have like one maybe two houses left that need some things that i can increase rents on but i just about everything else i've got them at full full rate based on full renoed. Um, so I'm running out of stuff to do. So y'all give me something to do. Call me with some questions or something or <laughs> figure out a way to work together. I don't know. I need something to do. <laughs> yeah. Hi, yeah. this is this is Amber. I have a quick question. Yeah. Could you explain the 1031 exchange? Sure. Yeah. So um, basically what the 1031 exchange is, is, you know, on that house I was talking about in Portland where, you know, I bought it for 158 and now it's worth 258 and I sell it and I make a hundred thousand dollar profit on it. If you take, if you haven't lived in that house, I think the IRS is two out of five years. Don't quote me on, I'm not a CPA or anything or a lawyer, but if you don't live in the house two out of the five years, then you have to pay capital gains on that house sale and all the depreciation. It's treated differently for personal property, personal homes, or homes that you've lived in. Um, so what a 1031 exchange does for you is it really just kind of defers those taxes. Um, so that gain that you made on the house, if you take those proceeds and you buy like or, or similar or greater than property than what you sold, then you don't have to pay taxes. So for example, I sold that one house in Portland. I bought two here in Atlanta that both the prices of those homes exceeded the sales price of the home in Portland. I didn't have to pay any um, uh, tax gains on it. I've essentially just deferred it. Um, so hopefully that uh, answers your question or. Yes, but thank not, you. I uh, just wanted to, can I, uh, you have to find uh, intermedia to hold the money. They're not gonna allow you to just put it in your account. <laughs> that's, and they give, that's exactly they give right. you about 45 days to find a property, I think it's 180 days or yep. something, and then you have to close within a certain amount of time. So it's not like yep. you can hold it forever. I just wanted to let her know that. You know, That's exactly it. right, Desmond. Yeah, like I said, I'm not a real estate attorney, but you're 100% right. Yeah. Have, there's an intermediary and they it's actually the escrow the money. Yeah. They actually, yeah, they escrow and you don't even get to touch it. Like you'll get the bank statement that says, here's all that yeah. money. <laughs> you, it's like, and you better hurry up and go spend it. You know, yeah. I, I have a question um, because it's real interesting because sometimes people think everything has to be perfect to get in and before they buy something and you bought and you learned as you went along a lot of things. Yeah. And, and sometimes just having the property and paying down the principal, whether it goes up in appreciation or not, over the years, even someone else is paying down your appreciate i mean your uh, principal and then you were able to transfer let's say if you bought it for 100 it paid down to 75 you still was able to transfer 25 that you did not you know uh have to come out your pocket with you, you transferred it into another property so that was real interesting that you were able to pay down your principal and still transfer over proceeds whether the property went up in value or stayed the same. And like you said, it's sometimes 
you know, was below what you was paying. But once I guess it levels off, you still can transfer when the time comes right, right. and transfer it over to another property because you don't have to save up the money. Actually, the property just paid down and you were just able to move it over. That was one question. Uh, my second question was the terms you bought. Did you house hop any of them? Did you stay in any of the uh, homes, the duplexes, rather, uh, and uh, rented out one? No, I mean, there was, there's been a few of my rentals along the years that um, I lived in primarily. Like my first house I bought here in Atlanta, I lived in it for God, like eight years. Oh, wow. and, then, and then I, when my son graduated high school, I left that area and <clears throat> I just rented the house. Um, so I did that. And, um, and then obviously the house in Portland, that was a situation as well. Um, but no, not the duplexes. The duplexes are actually up I-85 and are not very convenient. Um, they're more in a, more of a rural area. It really has become kind of the transportation corridor. Um, do you still do a lot of the duties or do you outsource some of them? I have definitely, I will tell you, uh, and I've learned this the hard way. If you, as you notice, I'm, I'm a little bit of a slow learner. <laughs> um, oh, you're good. You're good. <laughs> yeah, but it's methodical, right? Um, <clears throat> I've learned the hard way that there's some of these things that just doesn't pay for me to do anymore. So like, for example, I found a guy that, you know, started some of my renos. I don't do any painting. Don't even try to do any of that stuff anymore. I have a guy that will just do, and he'll get it done fast. And he'll, you know, he, he's very affordable. He actually works on apartment complexes here in Atlanta. He does flips on apartment complexes for a company. And he does work for me when I need him on the weekends. Um, so I'll pay him. And, uh, you know, I can't even, I can't even do it as cheap as he does. Another guy, um, flooring, you know, if you go to Home Depot or some big box store and buy a bunch of flooring and then you hire some people to help you install it. I found a guy that, you know, he puts in that was a LVL. So it was a glue down lem, uh, vinyl laminate flooring. Right. I can't even buy it for what he installs it for. He, he buys it in bulk and installs over cheaper than I can even buy it. So it doesn't even make any sense. And then, you know, it's just kind of gotten to the point where, you know, you can't be everywhere at once and you kind of have to choose. And as some of this real estate stuff, that's the other thing, you become a real estate agent, you know, people start taking you seriously. You have friends and family like, oh, you know, maybe you should sell my house. So, you know, that time you spend doing that is a lot more valuable than, you know, you may be trying to save yourself $200 on a plumbing job. Um, so yes, I absolutely, um, I think that's, uh, answering your question. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. And you had a, you had a question before that. I don't know if I caught that, but. Oh, uh, the house hacking or the terms or, uh, no, that, that, that was probably it. Yeah. I, I know you said you net or are you finding people in different markets and um, categories of the real estate uh, and they do other things and uh, partnering up with other people, you said, uh, finding a partner to work with. Yeah, I've had, you know, I've had, there's a lot of people who there's kind of this big fear, this misnomer that, oh, you're going to rent to people and you got this horrible thing and it's going to be a bunch of, a, you know, you're going to have to deal with a bunch of headaches and evictions. So I had this friend, they did $20,000 worth of damage. You know, that hasn't really happened to me. I've had maybe one house that had some pretty decent damage, but I'm going to level with you. Um, I use this tool now. I think it's called, I mean, you all have heard of it. It's called My Smart Move. I screen all my tenants with My Smart Move and it gives you actually a recommendation. And so whenever I, you know, I'm trying to rent to somebody, they use that and it'll actually give you a recommendation, either approve, accept or reject whatever it says is exactly what I do. Um, and I've actually went against it a couple of times and I regretted it. Um, so, you know, when I talk about the tools aspect, that's one of the tools I, I meant to mention that I forgot. Uh, it's been a really good tool. And there's a lot of other tools out there like that. Um, you know, that'll do kind of tenant screening. Uh, so. So you have a, 
you have a number of teams then because you're in different markets, like people that help you out, a core, a group to help you maintain and, and deal with these properties in different areas, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, like I had to, I mean, this uh, trailer park I have is seven acres. And then I have um, some properties just north of there, the duplexes, and I have all of the lawn care. And I used to have, when I bought the duplexes, I kind of inherited a vendor uh, from the previous owner. Oh, okay. And then it just kind of made sense for me. I'm like, okay, I just need to get somebody. There's, I pay somebody, a maintenance person, and I pay them something each month. And I bought a mower, you know, and really nice, you know, mower and he, and all the tools he needs. And so he takes care of, those properties and if there's any real if there's any real critical thing like I was out of town my wife and I we were in um we were traveling um last fall and I had this plumbing issue and I called him up and he traveled out there he's like yeah David this is pretty bad um you got water in the bedroom you got water in the bathroom and it looks like there's water coming through the slab you know he's kind of my eyes and ears um, and if there's something he could do to kind of correct it he will but I pay him I should pay him on like a monthly basis um, and some months he has more stuff to do, some months he doesn't, but it's almost kind of like, kind of like when you keep an attorney on retainer or something like that, I keep him on retainer. And, you know, like this month, I don't know how it is up there, but in Atlanta, I mean, things are just popping green. He'll probably have to mow every week, you know, but in December, he didn't even mow at all, you know, so I just pay him the same amount each month. And so he's part of my team. I have a lender. I have a really good lender. Um, I've learned um, she can really solve some very unique problems. I always tell my tenants, man, if you can, you know, if you can buy a house, try to buy a house, try to work on your credit. I'd love to work with you to help you get there. And, you know, um, so I have a, I've actually been able to help a couple tenants buy some houses using her. So. Did some of your properties, if anybody else got questions, go ahead. Um, did you? wait for uh some of the vacancies to do the upgrades uh you didn't force you know some people out right to try to get higher rents you just waited to some and if you did did you use like the more e energy efficient i guess um products so as far as forcing people out i no, i've never i wouldn't say i've um, really forced anybody out i will tell you that um, you know, I, like I bought properties that have tenants. So this is probably the most unique scenario is like if they're tenants that I've sourced, then, you know, we, we have common ground. We're aligned on that safe, clean and affordable housing for people in need. Um, but that trailer park, I mean, when I bought it, you know, there was some unscrupulous things going on in there that I didn't really I wasn't approving of. And so, you know, I let that be known, you know, like, hey, we're not going to have this. We're not going to have that. And, you know, um, I want everybody to let me know. And if you have a problem, you know, call the county out here or whatever. And so and then I'm active. So I'm out there and I'm present and people know me and they talk to me. And so I had a presence. And once you know it, but, you know, folks who don't fit that, they can't help support that safe, clean and affordable. They don't want to be there either. <laughs> and plus I'm on them if they're late on their rent. So it just seemed to be kind of, and I'm a Six Sigma guy, but it seems to correlate too. But those also seem to be the same folks that don't seem to pay their rent on time, which is like issue number one with me. So um, yeah, so I've never really, I mean, I've had two evictions in 20 years. So and um, yeah, one, one, I didn't follow the app and I rented to a guy that, that was paying me cash for rent. You guys ever heard this? Don't ever accept cash payments for rent. Yeah, well, I rented to that guy 12 years ago and found out that he was a criminal and he was wanted by the law. So I filed the I filed the dispossessory and he was gone because he didn't want the sheriff showing up, you know. So uh, lots of stories. So a lot of don't do a lot of what I've done kind of kind of stories. This is helpful. This has been very yeah. amazing. This is very helpful. Great, great. great. It sounds like it sounds like you and Desmond need to get off 
uh, go offline and talk, man. It's like Desmond yeah. is taking over the, the meetup now. You know what I'm saying? Nobody he's taking over the meetup now. This guy got so many properties in this time period. I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, he got his email, man. Go talk to him, man. I'm definitely going to talk to him. He already know. Oh. We're definitely going to talk, me and David. So. Yeah, Desmond, I'd be more than happy. And, and that's kind of the thing. I mean, this is what I love about this kind of thing is people like you and me, we can talk real estate all day long. Man. I, I really wrote three pages here, Aaron. I wrote three pages. <laughs> hey, 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 man. Hey, this is what this, this is waiting for, man. I mean, the, you know, David, David, the thing about David was David wasn't on any meetups or any podcasting like that. Uh, and I wanted, and, and when he told me a story, I said, man, you got to be on here because I wanted him to share everybody what he's doing uh i didn't know he got the job now i didn't know you i thought you were going to straight just do real estate so um uh, uh, full time david no no you know and it's uh it's it just yeah wow I, I, it's just hard for me to give it up you know so you know like with my i recently just made a, a switch in my corporate job it's like okay i want to i know because of my real estate stuff i want to be in sales and i want to be in it but my utopia is can I figure out a way to like dominate the Zillows of the world? Maybe we could all start a real estate software company together or something. <laughs> and you, you, you can, you can, you can deal by yourself then. You don't, you don't, you just doing the job because you like to do the job because you can, you had the money now, the, the, the monthly rate now to do it by, to, to um, be financially free. Right. Yeah. I mean, I could, I mean, you know, I, yes, I could, I could live off my rentals at this point. Um, you know, it's, uh, I wouldn't be able to do anything else, but, you know, watch Netflix. I mean, you know, uh, but, and not, and not make all the improvements, you know, cause it's always for me, I mean, you could stand still, but you want to make progress. Right. Right. So there's still plenty of folks. Like I'll give you an example, this maintenance guy that I have, he's actually a tenant of mine and his family is growing. He lives in a, um, three bedroom house and he needs four. Yeah. And I have no four bedrooms for rent. And man, I'd love more than anything to buy a four bedroom that we can renovate that he can move his family into, you know? So it's not just, you know, it's just trying to help out people in need too. So, um, and you put some money to that, um, which is, I just enjoy doing that. So. All right, next, next, next guy, I want to ask a question, Mr. <clears throat> Lawrence Laddie. Hey everybody, how's everybody doing? Um, Laddie. David. What's up? What's up, everybody? Listen, hey, David, a great yeah. presentation, man. Great presentation. I can definitely ID with all that you're saying because it seems like all the mistakes you talk about that you made, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. And I like I like I like what you said about because all people, like you said before, as I was listening to you, that all people want is really a, a clean, safe, secure place that's all they want. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's all they really want. And um, I'm glad that Aaron brought somebody on here who's talking like this, because a lot of times, you know, we hail everybody with uh, 50 units, 60 units, and some people can't identify with that. And yeah. um, I'm glad that Aaron is, uh, brought you on here. I'm, I, I'm, I took a screenshot of your email address. I'm going to email you. <laughs> I'd like you to come on my, on my um, meetup also. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Aaron. Yeah. That's a big time hit. <laughs> International Lawrence Laddie. That's an international thank podcast. You, thank you. I, I was going to say that, but I was going to wait for the after party, Ken, to say that. Yeah, I was going to wait for the after party to say that about about him. <laughs> I'm really, really again, David. Thank you very much. It was a very informative and amazing presentation. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Glad to. All right. Okay, any more questions for David? We'll open up for like five more minutes before we, so, before we go to the roll call and breakout rooms. Any more questions for David? Okay, well, going once, going twice, sold. Okay, so thank you, David. Uh, awesome presentation. Um, and uh, I'm so happy that you shared your story, everybody. Um, and uh man uh if you could yep. you, you know, always stick around uh we're going to go to breakout rooms in, in in a couple of minutes um and uh um and then we had after party afterwards where we uh just talk all things real estate and uh it's, it's a good time so 
Yeah. And, you know, I, and I really, Aaron, I really appreciate the opportunity. And when you and I talked a few months ago, I mean, I just felt like this was, this was kind of calling me to do this just to kind of help, you know, put, put some information out there. And if it hits you great, if it doesn't, then that's fine too. Um, so, you know, just trying to pay it forward because I got some of the same advice from some folks just, you know, four or five years ago that really helped a lot. So, you know, love to, love to help. And if you know other folks, you know, I'll be more than happy to come back too, but I really appreciate the opportunity tonight. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. You're always welcome to be here. Um, speaking of that, so for everybody to know, um, for the next three out of four weeks, I'm gonna have the ladies on here as guest speakers. So next week is uh, Megan Greathouse. She is somebody who is special to me because she helped me uh, with the uh, underwriting to get my first deal. So um, she does small multi-family units in, um, um, in St. Louis. Um, very, very talented. She's been on Pick Up Pockets and uh, I saw her, she was a guest speaker on a, on a real estate, better um, real estate conference uh, last year. So a lot of great content. Um, we also have uh, the Georgia tax queen, Ms. Shawchow Owens will be the following week. And then two weeks later after that will be Miss Julianne Pearson. So um, the ladies will be uh, front and center in three out of four weeks. Okay, so let's go to roll call. Um, before I go to roll call, as I'm gonna say this again, um, if anybody's interested in learning about homeless vets and being a, a homeless vets um, Zoom call that we have in April 1st, please let me know. And uh, I ask you, I'll add you to the email chain. Uh, a lot of great information. Uh, we have uh, a doctor on there who's going to talk about mental health. We have investors who are buying multifamily units to uh, house homeless vets. So it'd be great information if you're interested for that in your area. And also, uh, speaking of Mr. Lawrence Laddie, myself, Lawrence, uh, and others are guest speakers on um, the Spring Summit, which started today. Uh, so tomorrow, uh, my my interview with uh, Miss Angel Williams will be front and center. So uh, if you guys want to check out the Spring Summit, please uh, hit me up um, in, for information. It's over 30 speakers, a lot of great information, a lot of great speakers, um, really good price. So please, uh, if you guys, please uh, come out and support Angel. Um, it's two more days of this. Um, so... Like I said, more information, please let me know. All right, so we go to roll call. Uh, this is the part where I just talk briefly about different organizations um, to help you in your real estate journey. Somebody like Amber, who is new. So uh, for military, I'm starting with ADPI, uh, active view passive income. Matter of fact, one of the um, podcast um, speakers, Mr. Mike Foster, will be a guest speaker on here in the coming weeks. Um, also, several, uh, and, and they have a lot of information on there. They have a multifamily uh, um, course that they have by um, bi yearly, uh, semi annually. Uh, also, seven figure footman, Bill Allen. Um, Bill is really good at marketing. Uh, he always sends a lot of, a lot of great information. Um, and uh, thank you, thank you, uh, David. Thank you, thank you a lot, David. Um, but uh, like I was saying, uh, Bill sends a lot of great information. So Bill, Al Bill Allen's uh, several figure flipping, uh, white feathers. Um, and that, that's a group out of California has a lot of great information as well. Um, if you want information of any, any of my click, um, people on a uh, roll call, they all, they're on my website. Uh, the Wolverine mastermind group, uh, that me and Claudia are part of me and Kenneth, I'm sorry, Kenneth has gone to, but Kenneth, me and Claudia are the same squad, but uh, for military people, it's a great mastermind group of fifty dollars a a, a uh, month. But you get, you get a lot of content and um, a lot of great information from different veterans. All right, civilians, bigger pockets, uh, number one uh, real estate, basically um, website in the world. A lot of great information. A lot of people won't join. Um, Jamal King's make real estate real. Uh, $1,000 course, a lot of great information on there. And then Ring, which um, I'm part of, and a couple of people on here. Um, we have chapters in Washington State, North Carolina, New York, New York City, uh, 
and a couple chapters in, in North Carolina, in LA. So if you guys want to learn about Ring, uh, please go to my website um, and uh, you'll see that. You'll see the login. Uh, you can log in and, and be a member. And uh, I guarantee you, you'll probably get a deal from Ring. So David, David knows about it. So uh, David Sealy. So me and him are part of the uh, Ring team. So. Um, and if you guys like this, please uh, give this uh, meetup a five-star rating. It will help us 